Okay, hey, welcome. So we have right now the, the amp ready for you guys to get a sound of, or you know, hear a little bit of the sound from it. But I can't do it with four tubes first because with four tubes it sounds really bad. I'm trying to figure out why. But with two tubes in it, it actually sounds really good. I'm pretty excited. It sounds awesome. So we'll, we'll give you a little sample of that. Then we'll give you a sample with all four. And I'm trying to troubleshoot why and we'll go into some troubleshooting. So, so here we go. This is at a little bit lower volume. Pretty clean. So let me turn it up a little bit. We'll get a little bit higher volume. And we'll get some good crunch now. So you get the idea, that sounds nice and crunchy. If I go soft on it, it's still nice and clean. So we're just kind of on the verge of breakup there, if I turn it up a little more. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna quickly shut this off, put the other two power tubes in, and then you'll get a sound of what it's like at the problem stage. Okay, so we're at fairly low volume. We're gonna let you hear, you know, it sounds pretty good still at low volume. hit a clip just a little bit already and it just sounds really horrible too and if we try and bring it quite high you can hear it just sounds incredibly bad and you hear that click that hard pop so I don't want to do that too much because it might damage things but you can hear an obvious click and a pop whenever I play anything even with some pressure at higher levels. So, if I really dial it back down again, just fine. So we need to troubleshoot and see if we can understand what is causing that, because it does sound hideous. The amp's worthless if we can't get it in that mode, most likely, unless I decide to change it to a 50 watt amp instead of 100. So, there we have it, we'll, uh, we'll let you know what we find. Okay, so the next video segment is going to be a, a video showing some oscilloscope footage where I found a lot of really odd bad noise and from that I ended up taking that to the forums uh, and they gave me a suggestion that really my a lot of my leads and runs from the board over to the input tubes or the preamp tubes really gave a lot of room for oscillations to come in. So I, I changed all of those runs that went into the grids to be coaxial cable and that really cleaned it up. But I still want you to see just for perspective on what it was looking like before versus after and then we'll get to a second clip that talks about that. Okay, the dogs continue their fun upstairs, which we can't blame them. Uh, I have a little bit of jitter going on here. I've also got a whole lot of stuff for the obsessive compulsive types to freak out about in case it's just a little messy for you, you'll get over it. So at any rate, um, so what I'm gonna do now, we've got that, you can see I've got the sine wave there. I'm gonna turn on a second probe that's connected right by the right before the input stage and it's gonna have kind of nothing right now because I don't have any signal, but I'm gonna, ooh, look at that, we're getting some signal. Uh, let me hit, let's try and do a little auto adjust in this. So. All right, so if you look right there, we've got, on my input, I have 100 millivolts per division and we're covering about two, sort about 200 millivolts per division. I don't know, I've got some, I think it's my, my app on my phone is kind of crummy because it's got a lot of weird jitter going on even on the input. This is right connected to the input. But down here we've got uh, you know, a decent amount of 
a little bit of hopping going on, but we also are at 200 millivolts there uh, because I have the volume turned very low, but I'm going to slowly start turning the volume up. We are getting a kind of a weird uh, distortion there. Oh, I'm adjusting my wrong one. So, um, if I adjust and play with, I'm actually definitely seeing things go on. If you saw before, I had that same thing going on, but I'm getting some kind of funny distortion with the sine wave. It could be my probes being funny. I don't know. Okay, so you just saw there how bad that looked, and that turned out to be a lot of that oscillation uh, and loop feedback coming back into it that caused a lot of problems. I think we may have most of that solved now, but I'm not positive, and this next few segments here shows us looking at an oscilloscope and seeing where we have very clean input uh, all the way through until we get just to the other side of the phase inverter, and we'll, you'll see more here. Okay, hello everybody. Um, so I've been doing some troubleshooting and I've found something very interesting that might help me solve what's going on. Just so you know, we're gonna go to the oscilloscope after I show you just a little bit of layout here so you get what's going on. The yellow line will be the input, which is over back this way, which doesn't matter. What's important is these two probes here. I've got this blue probe, and don't be misled, this one's yellow, but that's, that's just because I haven't put the right one. This actually will be purple on the monitor. Uh, and then this blue one is actually correct, it's blue on the monitor. It's connected right here at the output point past the capacitor the uh, coupling capacitor between the stages. So this is where the output comes in here, goes through this coupling capacitor, and then right here I'm taking it out and I get a nice blue signal. I started playing around with the, uh, I, I noticed up in here, I don't know if you can see this, these are the four 47K resistors that go to each of the tubes. If I, to connect a probe to this half, which would be the same as this half, it was nice and clean, but the second I touch either of these two, it gets super dirty. If I connect back here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's on the other side of this, behind this one. If I connect here, it also is super dirty, but if I connect to the other side of this coupling capacitor, it's super clean. So I'm not sure what that means yet, other than that I know the problem seems to happen after here. So either this coupling capacitor maybe has a problem, or something is back feeding into this side, but I'll have to troubleshoot and figure that out, but that actually does seem to help me single out good here, bad here, very telling and from there on out to this blue and over is bad. So either there's something that's coming in back through here that shouldn't be, or this is bad. And I don't know which one it is, but what I'm gonna probably try and do today is replace this one with something. And if that solves the problem, it was this one. If it doesn't, it lets me know I need to try and figure out somewhere else what's letting something bleed in that shouldn't be. So, but at any rate, that is a great starting point for me to figure out what's going on. So now you can see the yellow is my input signal. That's the input waveform, and it's fairly low voltage. We're at 500 millivolts, and it's maybe, you know, a thousand millivolts peak to peak, I don't know, which is usually a little hot, but the bigger point you really hear, this is my blue one that I showed you a moment ago on the thing, and that's nice and clean, and my purple one is nice and clean. Watch what happens, though, when I take the probe and switch it over to the other side of that capacitor that I just showed you. This is, is obvious. Oh, gee, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? So now we have spaghetti. Anybody hungry? So I'm going to have to try and figure out what's bleeding back into that point because everything before it was clean. So the coupling capacitor itself is either wrong and doing something really bad, or on the other side of that coupling cap, it's blocking something, but on this side it's not, so which means something else is feeding in in a bad way somewhere, somewhere through that. So I'll have to look at the schematic and a few other things and see if I can figure out where it could be bleeding in here, but I'm also just possibly trying to replace that cap and see what I get. So we'll uh, let you know what we find.